there, welcome back to EU4. I'm playing as the Netherlands. It is 1659. And I'm building a new mini navy at the moment in the mainland, to the homeland. And the reason for that is I'm trying to control trade in Malacca, all the way down here. Last episode, I did take some provinces in the area. But first, the tulip mania. The tulip was introduced in Europe in the 1550s from the Ottoman Empire. They quickly became popular among the rich merchants in the Netherlands as a luxury item. The market grew, and in 1634, when demand increased in France, speculators entered the market. In 1636, a futures market was created, and during the autumn and winter, the prices skyrocketed until prices collapsed in February 1637. The result was the bankruptcy of many and economic disaster. Hmm. I don't want to lose stability. We'll get all that stuff. Uh, this is say the state could alleviate the losses. I'll get some inflation. I'm pretty confident. I can up that down pretty quick. Uh, Royal Merchant from Cologne. I will begrudgingly accept it. Now, unfortunately, Malacca, who is hoping to attack, is a tributary state of Ming, which obviously makes them. Not an overly enticing target to attack. My other option is, is to attack Brunei directly. Which would bring in Malacca but without Ming. Could be a big ask though. Uh, Gundich Mara is getting grain. Oh no, it's a tricky one. Or oh, I declare war on one of these little nations and attack Brunei that way. Might just wait and see how um, some of these alliances pan out. This is my my Laka fleet. Do claim here before it runs out. I'll get one in Carter. And I'll just renew him. Uh, can I get some claims in Brunei? No, I can't get a claim in Brunei. That's awkward. Nor here. So I really got to get... Hmm. Okay, that makes it tricky. Malag now Ghana is now self-sustaining. That's good. What I'll do is I'll take this opportunity then, with my free colonists, to send a colony to Sampit. Sand pit as a way to attack Brunei. Off you go. Malacca is my new rival. Anatomical theatre. Local doctors in Loon have begun to pay good money to study fresh corpses. The physicians claim this allows them to improve their knowledge of the human body, documenting it for the betterment of mankind. Improving the grasp of hum at human anatomy is not an argument that impresses locals when the graves of recently deceased are found open in the morning, however. The citizens of Loon are now demanding that we restrict these horrible practices and that we put a stop to the grave robbers. I'll just lose a bit of innovativeness. Reprimand and restrict the doctors. So Malacca's arrival. That's interesting. How's that tech going? One more year. Okay. I've landed in the sandpit. Growth of the business of draperies. Our efforts to maximise trading profits in the area of the Netherlands has borne fruit in the province of Loon. Entrepreneurs have managed to greatly increase the output of draperies and have found new markets in our capital for the processed goods. Two base production in Loon, excellent indeed. All those ships appear to be ready. Have them all meet in Amsterdam, please. 
go protect trade in Malacca. I have too many military leaders. Huh. Why did I lose ability to hold one? It's odd. It's okay. Oh, I've got plenty of military power to spend. So much in so I'm going to do some development now. Um, right up. Can't do Colombo. Can't do Candy. And Limburg. I'm going to do some cantalism while I'm here. 63% now. Okay. Still can't get an alliance with Venice. It's a little bit annoying. This rebel uprising. Over here. Oh yeah, it's gonna happen. Uh, for safety, I'm gonna put my armies together. There's that colonist going. Six more months and he'll be there. They should pop any minute, these guys. A leader, that's fine. Um, institutions, because I can. There it goes in Banten. Where is Banten? Oh, thirty-two thousand. That's um slightly concerning. Yeah, I played to him though. Ooh, the two side general. Done. Okay, that's that problem solved. Um, free advisor slot. I'll obviously go for the trade efficiency guy. Ready for the new tech, so let's grab the institution manufactories. Done. And let's grab some new tech. So let's grab Diplo Tech 21 that Shebek. Originally developed by Barbary Corsairs, this galley didn't carry as many guns as Gallias, but it was smaller and far more maneuverable. This improved maneuver allowed it to be far more effective in combat. So I can sabotage reputation and enable the Shebek. And I can get Miltec 21 line infantry. Thanks to bayonets, each musketeer could function as a pikeman as well. This allowed pikes to be removed from infantry equipment and provided infantry formations with more firepower. Gives you some more military tactics and infantry shock. And admin 21 is just around the corner. Okay, the colonists has made it. Ah, um, great power once again. I still can't make a claim. I just need to wait for that to be 400 strong, maybe. Wow. Okay, so my set holder is terrible. He's a babbling buffoon, he's indulgent, and he's naive enthusiast. Everything one of those is negative. That sucks. Uh, let's grab... Ooh, do I want that? Or do I want another colonist? Hmm. That's a big choice.
Another Colonist would be nice. I don't really need it though, so I'll just grab the tech. Land clearance, 21. Large scale woodlands are of course useful as a source of firewood and a place for hunting. But if the trees were to go, those lands could be used for farming instead. We can build a furnace. Production efficiency has increased slightly. Banton has been fully caught up. Um, ooh. Expensive. Expensive missionaries. I wish there was a way to know what makes um, missionaries more expensive than others. Roggia Martina. Roggia Martina is a very proficient merchant, renowned for his attempts to improve trade customs and to stabilize the economy of our nation. Don't need prestige, so I will say use efforts to be admired throughout the nation, get 50 admin points and 25 diplo points. I think 50 prestige would be worth more than 50 admin. It's between you and me, though. A few new manufacturing, but none of them are really great spots. All those cores are kicking in. I need more universities, don't I? So let's maybe go. I'm going to build three universities. Let's go one, two, three. They don't take out a building box, new one just opens up. And let's do a conversion in Kawali. Like so. I want to make sure that Austria is over. I'm getting that one back. Sale of titles. My lord, one of your advisors has suggested some of titles of nobility to anyone who can afford to pay. We could bring in lots of money and open a way for social advancement for the rich if we do, but it would devalue the idea of nobility and perhaps upset the existing aristocratic families should we do this. I don't really need money. So let's say nobility cannot be bought and gets me 50 admin points instead. I think it's much more beneficial. Savoy is no longer considered great. Actually, maybe we should get that royal marriage back with Austria. Austria is nice and powerful now. That could be my way to stop Savoy. Savoy, how do I stop Savoy? I'm so close to an alliance with Venice. Venice is not rivaling Austria. Could work. Uh, my colony in Gundit, Gundit Jamara is almost done. One more month will do it. So move towards the South Australia area. There it is. Oh, new colonial nation. Hmm. I will call it Dutch Australia. Dutch Australia is formed from the overseas provinces of Netherlands in colonial Australia. The new nation is an independent possession of its mother country, but may break free in the distant future if mismanaged. Okay. Wave of immigration. One of our colonies has received a large sum of surge in immigrants seeking their fortune in our colonies. It will soon be self-supporting. Self. It will soon be a self-supporting city, providing much wealth to our realm. Two hundred pops for free. Okay, so. I have a first colonial nation. So if I send a colonist here, does that work into Dutch Australia? Is it? Hmm. Not too sure. Let's find out what happens. Lots of 
further to spend, Muslim sailors. From the Yellow Sea to the Indian Ocean, there's an abundance of ships from small dows to great galleys, constantly sailing between many ports. Taken together, this trade network provides goods and supplies for more than half the world's population. What many of these galleys have in common is that they are, na they are manned by Muslim sailors. These are sailors from Africa or the Middle East joined by converted locals. Hmm. Wow. Increases missionary strength, but costs a lot of money. Just don't mean to see the value I'm getting out of it. We have no need for foreign faiths on our ships, I think. Now, Taiwan. Have I found Taiwan yet? No, I haven't. Is that Taiwan there? I don't know if it is or not. Uh, let's grab another colony. We need some more troops for this. Let's go one, two, three, four. It's be over again, but that's not an issue. I have no colonists to send. I thought I did have a colonist to send. Oh, no. That's alright, I've already. Colonial Ventures. Uh, let's cancel that. I've got already started one in Australia. Uh, Colonial Ventures. With the discovery of the new world, we've entered what looks like our greatest period of prosperity. Despite the immense wealth returning to us, allowing Hendrik Lodewijk to finance one of the most outstanding armies in the world, we've not been successful in creating a strong naval force, and his attempt to conquer the neighbouring states has so far failed miserably. Really? Now, let's invest in the naval force. Sure. I thought I had a good navy between you and me. In fact, I might even build some more ships. Let's build ten more. Here we go. Jeez, Barden has ended. A uh, cup could use a workshop. One there. Baruch Spinoza, the Prince of Philosophers. The son of an immigrant Portuguese Jewish family, Baruch Spinoza would lead a relatively simple life and supported himself as a lens maker and contributions from benefactors. While Spinoza is said to have been an excellent lens maker, it is his devotion to philosophy, ethics and theology that this man will be remembered for. Spinoza published few works in his lifetime but his ideas came to circulate all the same and resulted in the University of Heidelberg offering him a chair, which he declined for fear that it might restrain his thought. Hmm. Oh yeah, 100 admin points, 5 prestige and a... Half price skill three advisor. Interesting. Version. This time I go to pack one. And half price skill three advisor. Huh. Which one was he? That one. Don't really need Gibby prestige. Here yeah, for the unrest. Foreign talent. Our drill masters stand in awe of the Savoy armies and the methods they have so successfully employed to organize army routines and practices. We're not the only ones who've taken notice. Savoyard officers are in high demand in many countries. Of course, the Crown of Savoy does not take kindly upon those of its officers that would seek employment abroad. would likely disapprove if we try to entice any subject of theirs. It does not mean, however, 
They're not individuals who'd be interested in such a career opportunity if we made it worth their while. No. Venice are so close to an alliance, I just won't quite do it. Ottomans, I'm guessing, won't. Nor will Russia. I just don't know if I could use to take on Savoy. It's frustrating me. Well, I might end it there for that episode. Not much really happened that time. Just some more colony work, that's about it. Oh, there's the first Dutch Australian troops. Got these guys here, I don't really need them anymore, do I? I'll just send them down. No. I'll just disband them completely. Okay, let's pause it there. And I think that will do for this episode. So just some colony work and trying to find a way to take some more land here in Malaya. Thanks for watching guys. Appreciate your support. Hope to see you next time.